Boom, 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 boom. Gonna shoot you right down. Right off of your feet. Take you home with me. Put you in my house. But I uh, slipped this one in there, glued it in, and it left sort of a valley-shaped shape on the bottom of the, of the bushing. Not a good thing for a piston to slam against. You want a nice flat surface. So I took a little piece of one-inch pipe, glued that so that it came just to the surface of the outside bushing, filled all of that space up with uh, liquid epoxy glue, and once that got hardened, I sanded it just a little bit with a disc that I had some sandpaper on the face of, just with a drill, no big deal. You'll see that later. And uh, then glued this piece of neoprene rubber to the front. Uh, like I say, what that's for is when you release the pressure and this piston's up here against the barrel, it comes slamming back with, like I said, somewhere between four, five, six hundred pounds of pressure. Bam! And you have to have something good and soft and, and, and yet sturdy for it to land against so that it doesn't just blow this cap out of the back. Uh, that's an important feature. Now, onto the piston. Before I get too long winded here. This is an extremely simple version of a piston. That could be simpler, it could be just one piece, but I've actually made it uh, in a way that I can actually adjust the length of the piston so that I can adjust how far back it comes away from the barrel. Uh, the shorter the distance is, the less time it has to make a real hard hit and yet you want it far enough back that enough air can get out so that you're not restricting the airflow so that you get a nice fast release of air. Now there's a uh, theoretical rule that one quarter of the diameter, in other words with a two inch barrel, a quarter of that's a half inch, theoretically half an inch is all I have to pull back away to get a complete air dump. Uh, I've got this adjusted out to about three quarter but as you can see I could move this front one just by changing the nuts here uh, to, to any throw I want, any distance I want here within an inch or so. So I could try a half, I could try a half, you know, one and a half, I could try different ones and see what performs better. Now how these were made, and again I'll show this probably in a separate video just on pistons, was nothing more than a hole saw. Took a hole saw, cut, 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 put them together with a bolt. On this one I took some uh, rubber I bought at just the, the hardware place, it's just a sheet rubber, glued it to the face, put it between two of these, cut around, sanded it, got a nice clean edge on it. Very, I built the whole thing in about an hour. Very simple version of the piston. Things that I'm going to do to it later, first of all, it desperately needs to be waterproofed so that it doesn't expand and change shape inside there when it gets damp from the condensation. And what I'm going to do to increase performance is put two O-rings on it, and then when I do that, it actually makes a seal so I can't have air just squirt around it when I fill. I've actually got to have a hole drilled through it that will allow the air to go through this way but not back through this way. It's called a check valve. So these modifications on the piston will probably be a separate video I'll do sometime next week uh, when I get a chance to get around to really tweaking the performance on this piston. This project really is in two parts. The valve body is kind of a separate project from the piston. That's why you want to make them so that you can get in there and change out the piston and try different things to get your performance higher. Uh, if you're out to do serious destruction, which is what I like to do with these cannons, is blow stuff up. I go for power. So anything I can do to increase performance, I'll try and do it. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, I tend to overbuild things, and maybe I should put my disclaimers in right now. Uh, every single piece of PVC you see me use on this air cannon is pressure rated schedule 40 with the exception of this which is pressure rated schedule 80 which is even higher pressure rated harder plastic thicker I do not ever use anything called DWV drain waste and vent uh, it's it's trash it'll get you killed these things uh, you're dealing with a lot of pressure here if one of these blows up it can shrapnel it literally literally kill you so you do not go with the cheap plastic go out and get pressure rated schedule 40 PVC. Uh, one of the big differences is the gluing area. It's not just how thick it is, but how much gluing area there is to hold the doggone things together uh, to keep them from blowing up, cracking, breaking loose. Uh, it's very, very important that you don't use any cheap DWV. Also, another disclaimer, 
doing this is is this stuff is not built for this. It's not made for what we're doing. You're taking, a, you're taking your life in your own hands, but if you do everything right, you should be at least moderately safe. So if you build one of these and you do it a little bit wrong or you do it right and it blows up and it kills you and it you know blows your house up and brings your neighbor's trees down, it's not my fault. It, it, it's inherently dangerous. So just be careful when you build these things. Try to do everything right. Overbuild rather than underbuild and you ought to be okay. Um, I just don't want anybody to get hurt using what I've done in this video uh, incorrectly. So do, do, do be careful. The other design, rather than having to make that big bushing with all the ceiling stuff in it, is, let's see if I can get this straight here. And that would go there. Alrighty, now, let's see if I can show you this. Basically, of course, on the bottom of the T where the tank goes, your usual slip to thread connector, the normal thing you'd have so you can screw a tank on. On the back side of the T, the side here that has the bushing on it on my other one, you actually go ahead and just put that coupling, just like I have on the other one, and then you have a, a, a nice bushing. In this case, I got a small one. This little, little two inch bushing here is, has a nice flat surface already in it, so that's just a bonus. I'll just put a little donut of rubber on there and uh, glue it right to that and we'll be good to go. But uh, that actually gets, once you glue that rubber donut in there, just gets glued in. It's permanently. That's just there forever. What's interesting is what you do on the other side of the T, the front side where the barrel goes. What you do there is you take a piece that is a slip to thread, and in this case this is a two inch T, two inch slip to thread so that you end up with this female thread on the front of the T. Right? So this is the barrel end here. Then, as a separate piece, you take, as I did before, you take your little piece of, in this case, one inch pipe, and you take that and you push it all the way through a bushing, just like we did before on the front, by cutting the little edge out of the bushing in the back, I don't know if you can see that ridge in there, as you cut that out, the one inch pipe will then slide all the way through. So now you have a piece of one inch pipe sitting about here. You take this two inch slip to male thread, you put the bushing in there. So now what you've got is a piece of one inch pipe that goes from here and sticks out over about here. You can screw that in now to the front of the T. No O-ring. You just take it, crank it down with a little of that yellow uh, gas sealing tape that they make, put that on the threads, crank that bad boy down, and you will have to be able to maybe adjust your piston a little bit to make a difference for how far the threads go in, because it may thread further in as it gets older. Every time you take it off, it may thread further and whatever, because it wears. But it's a, a threadable version so that you've got these two pieces separate. And then of course, again, that barrel will be sticking out right to about here, so that when you put it together, it comes to the middle of the T. But you end up with essentially the same thing. You get a piston on this side, a smaller barrel on this side, you put your air in from behind it, pop that loose, piston slides, operates exactly the same. Um, oh, and interestingly enough, a one and one quarter inch uh, connector join for joining two pieces of pipe fits interestingly almost perfectly inside a piece of two inch pipe. So uh, just a little bit of information there on what you might make your piston out of. Uh, just a convenient size. And uh, you could fill that with epoxy or whatever and you'd have like an instant piston, a little rubber on one side, you're done. So there's a simpler version of this project, maybe for a starter, for somebody who just wanted to, uh, to do one very quickly and easily. Uh, these bigger ones are, by their nature, a little tougher to do.